let's freaking go! Huh? 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 We're only a few days away from the LSU spring game. Can you believe it? An actual game is about to be played. And even though it's not the format that you would prefer, it's just offense versus defense. We're pretty excited about that. So in just a second, I'm going to give you my three fastest risers during the spring. But obviously the big story of the day, seven banks. This is just a DB announcement if I've ever seen it. Showing off those abs, seven. <laughs> this is such an exotic way of announcing that you are coming to LSU at a huge position of need. But what about his health? Well, at this point, I think LSU's cornerback room, they are willing to take a chance on a guy that has played in multiple uh, college football playoffs. And, of course, our spring practice Breakdowns are presented by Presley Collection and PresleyCollection.com. We say hi to Vet. We say hi to Reed. We say hi to Danny Girl. I hope you feel better, Danny Girl. Danny Girl. We say hi to Mick. I have a feeling Mick's going to join the teacher club tonight. I really do. Rob! What's good? I love it. So this is what I want to get to as far as, you know, because we live in a society. What's up, Legacy, Rai Rai, KJ? Good to see everybody in here. Hope the migraine gets better. Uh, here's the thing, okay? I got to agree here with Chris. You got to go get guys that can help you right now. Now, if it's you being unbelievably desperate, then don't do it. But the deadline is drawing near. May 1st is the latest date, according to Julie Bodwin of Rivals, uh, that you can actually get a player that can help you next year. And it can't be an SEC to SEC transfer. So Ajayi Hall, for instance, the wide receiver from Alabama who committed to Texas, could not have come to LSU because he wasn't a graduate transfer. If you're a graduate transfer, you could transfer as many times as you want with no penalty. But there was another deadline roughly a month or so ago for you to go SEC to SEC and be eligible to play. So it's very important to keep that in mind. Um, so, yeah, there's so much going on right now. It's okay, Jay. Good to see ya. Uh, but for me, I, I just can't envision LSU using a slot from here until May first on a guy that can't help you next year. Okay, if they can't help you next year, why would you want them? Right now, if it's after May 1st, which is past the deadline for a player to play with your team next year, then you can start looking towards the future and getting a kid that will be ready for you in 2023. But for right now, you, you have to be looking for the portal right now to find guys. So uh, for me, as far as Seven Banks is concerned, I know a lot of you are Wondering, well, you know, with the injury, was it even worth going to get him? And Seven Banks is recovering from a hip injury. Well, at this point, I'm not sure if it matters, right? I'm not sure if it matters that so-and-so isn't completely healthy, right? So for me, I, I think you just got to go look and find some people that can help you right now okay so that is something lsu is doing i'm pretty sure they are getting after it at this point because that is roughly a week and a half away from now so uh we'll see it's going to take some magic to find that magical tight end or that magical offensive lineman and then again that offensive lineman would need to be ready to help 
right now. So um, be on the lookout for that. For me, my fastest three risers of spring football, and this to me is just uh, an objective truth at this point. Um, I've done two interviews with other channels, and I, I've basically been asked this, this same question. And for me, uh, it's pretty simple. Will Campbell is definitely one of the three players who has helped their stock out the most. He has earned himself a starter spot up to this point. And I would say the other two players would be Trey Bradford and to take one from the defensive side of the football, I would probably have to go with uh, Greg Brooks. I think those three players are the three that have helped their stock out the most where all three of those guys, Brooks, you, you figured would be in the rotation, but he's looked really good up to this point. Will Campbell, you I don't think anyone would have guessed that he would have won the starter's job this quickly. But I think Trey Bradford is someone we didn't spend a whole lot of time talking about. It Just by staying healthy, this could be a guy that could win this job, right? Especially if John Emery can't keep his health in order. So I think those three guys are the three guys that have helped their stock out the most. So we shall see. This poll should have, I don't know. And our poll question tonight is seven banks LSU's best cornerback. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Is seven banks LSU's best corner? It's pretty simple. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Uh, there are only two spots left for LSU to go get players. Only two. No. Yes, 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 yes. Leonard says, no, what's up, Leonard? Let's go to Mark's first Super Chat of the evening. Thank you so much, Mark, for supporting the channel. Two spots left. What position does LSU target with the last two transfer spots? Um, I, I think obviously off it's a line and tight end will be where they go. And for me, Mark, I don't think you should take my word for it. You should also take Brian Polian's word for it. Right. So that's where I see them trying to go over this next week. I think, uh, for me, Polian said during his post game, I said his post game in his press conference just a few weeks ago. So Polian is the special teams coordinator, but he's also a recruiting coordinator for LSU. Uh, he said he's looking at three positions. He said he was looking at defensive back, so seven banks. And this was when they had three slots left. So the two other positions he said is offensive line and tight end. Now they're not beholden to that. If you get closer to May 1st and let's just say there's another DB or potentially um, a rush end out there. Um, they, they might take a chance on it if there is someone in the portal, but I think that's where they're going to go. Offensive line and tight end. Now, what's very interesting is LSU actually has a lot of scholarship offensive linemen on their roster right now. Uh, it's just none of them are proven, which is kind of a scary thing. Some of them have played. Some, but the actual roster of scholarship guys is relatively high. It's not unbelievably deep, but it's relatively high. So we'll see. Jonah Miller. Let's see, I don't think it'll be a tight end. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. If the staff is very enamored with Nick Storrs, they might feel good enough to roll with that. I still think you're going to see at some point Jack Besh play some of the tight end role next year as well. Skipper, what post do you see that would indicate Garrett Nussmeyer entering the transfer portal? I'm, I'm interested. I'm really interested to know.
They don't. So the way it works and how this year worked, okay, they had 32 slots to fill. Now, initially, you only had 25 slots that you could use on high school players or transfer players. But the NCAA initiated a rule this year, Coach Smith, where if seven players transfer out, you can bring in a maximum of seven players. The issue, though, is LSU has already had the seven-player maximum, and they've already signed uh, 32, or excuse me, 30 players up to this point. Now it's seven banks. So we'll see. I, I think for me, um, I, I, I don't see um, LSU finding like just this can't miss tight end from now until you know May 1st. But we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, Skipper, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about Garrett Nutzmeyer. Uh, I think for me, he's. We'll see how the spring game plays out. On Instagram, he's got a couple of different schools with what looks like him in his uniforms. All right, let me pull it up real quick. I, I, I don't know. See. Well, it looks like it's all LSU stuff. Oh, his story. Oh, well, that's his buddy. Uh, that's his buddy, J. Michael Sturdivant, uh, who is his number one receiver in high school. So here's the thing. This is why I don't follow and keep up with every athlete's social media post is they're all friends. They all go to camps together. Some of them are high school teammates, so they're going to post when their teammates do well or when they go somewhere else. I see LSU players congratulating Bama players, right? There's still LSU players that congratulate Elias Ricks and wish him the best at Alabama. They're all friends. So it's it's... It, it, I, I say don't get too caught up uh, in Instagram. And that's even at the professional level uh, where it can get really childish. Childish, Debo Samuel, Kyler Murray, uh, when it comes to that. Uh, Ray, this is a good question. I, I will not be attending uh, the spring game. Um, I, I feel like it's better for me to stay back and you know do everything uh, from from – from here so I can do all the different film studies and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I, I would like to, <laughs> if there, if there was a way I could, I mean, they're actually, I don't know. I'll keep you updated on that. Ray. I, I, I kind of want to go, but at the same time, it is also for me, I don't want, I don't want to go to the game and then not be able to give you the coverage after the game that I would like to give you if you get what I'm saying. Right. Because, you know, last year we did the Arkansas game thing and, uh, you know, I was, I had to leave at halftime and it, it was a mess. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, once again, uh, we are getting up to, uh, 80 or 79 people in here. So once the numbers get up to, to this point, there's so many comments that, that float in. If you super chat or Venmo, cash app, we go straight to it. Uh, but I'm going to try and get to as many uh, questions as we possibly can. Once again, thanks to our friends at Pricey Collection, PriceyCollection.com. And a uh, friendly reminder, if you do join the PHL T-Shirt Club, boom, we're giving away a number 18 autograph. You guys know how much I appreciate the number 18 uniform. Let's see if we can get this in focus right here. Come on right here. Boom. Christian like a tour autograph card. That'll be a part of it. I'll also throw in this Odo Beckham card. If you are the next PHL t-shirt club member. And I do want to shout out a few of our PHL t-shirt club members. There's Skipper right there. There's Roger right there. Gotta love it. 
there's Mike Dimbrock right there. But I want to show you uh, our newest PHL T-shirt club member, LGZ, who is joining the PHL T-shirt club. What say you, Doc? You're sweating in your shirt, man. Tommy and oh, I kind of want to go now. Tommy and Tracy are going. And Ray's going. Are you kidding me? Everyone, welcome to the channel, John Quavy. John, welcome. Uh, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Uh, I always want newcomers to feel welcome. So everyone show John some serious love. Let's see what John's cooking up here tonight. How many current LSU players do you expect to transfer out after spring? That's a good question, John. Obviously, that is a very, very personal question. For me, some players are going to transfer out just based on their current situation, right? It's not the fact that they don't like the new coaching staff. It's just, well, they're, they're just not around, right? If you notice closely, John, there's a lot of players you see that are just not part of practice, right? For instance, uh, Sonny Fanua. We've not seen Todd Harris. We've not seen uh, Philip Webb. Some of that might be injury-related. Some of that might be academic-related. I tend to not go too deep into either one of those, uh, but... For me, th there's a lot of guys that, that are missing, and there's not any full explanation as to why they're missing. Um, you know, for me, uh, John, I do think the likelihood that LSU has four quarterbacks going into next year is small. So you would have to think one of the quarterbacks is going to transfer, and ironically – Walker Howard is the one quarterback who is the least likely to transfer out of the group. So for me, um, one quarterback at the very least, you would probably expect one offensive lineman and one receiver to do the same thing. I don't think any tight ends are going to transfer because they're all going to have to play next year. So I, I think one of the receivers will enter the portal. Um, I think one of the offensive linemen, probably will enter the portal as well. So there, there's three players for you. Um, and I can see one of the running backs as well, you know, looking to get more immediate playing time. On the defensive side of the ball, um, a lot of these guys that are hanging around the bottom of the depth chart, I can see it. But, you know, for me, defensively, if I were a defensive back, I am not going anywhere. Even though there's a bunch of really good young defensive backs coming in, uh, Jordan Allen and obviously LaTerrence Welch. Number one, defensive backs play a lot on special teams. Number two, defensive backs at LSU in particular have been very hurt. Defensive backs get hurt a lot. So you're going to get your opportunity to play. And, you know, you know, number three, it's DBU. <laughs> if you get the opportunity to play defensive back at LSU, even if it takes a few injuries – you know, that's an honor. That does a lot for your future. So for me, I I, I could see uh, defensive backs being more likely to stay. So we'll see. So Carl in Dallas, I haven't seen you in a minute. Carvis, what's good? A resident PhD student here. PHL. Oh, yeah, Reed, I'm just saying I could see it happening. 
right? It's a lot easier right now to to feel like you're going to get targets going into next year. I could see one. I could see one. But for me, the only position I would say with near 100% certainty where somebody's going to transfer is probably quarterback. So that's uh, that's where I am right now. Now, could that change? Yeah, absolutely. So TRU, I, I, I've got to shout out TRU. He comments on every video that I do. It goes a long way. Watching every video goes a long way. And I know we do a, a wide variety of videos. One day it could be a film study. One day it could be a recruiting video. One day it could be the Corey Kiner video. TRU watches every video from front to back. I really do appreciate that. It, it goes a long way. Um, and he comments, and he gets in the comment section. And TRU also shares the channel with other people. So I appreciate you. You've been rocking with me for a while, and I felt like I needed to shout you out. Um, and yeah, you know, the, the, for those that are just joining us, the big story is the big story. Seven Banks is an absolutely ginormous transfer. Um, I had pretty good intel that it, this was going to happen um, for for a while, right? Uh, I felt pretty confident about it. I was, but you know, with the transfer portal, you never know. You honestly never know. But I'm glad that it did happen. And I understand some of you are wondering, well, you know, the hip injury and, you know, you hear, well, the hip injury was the same injury that Bo Jackson had with this hip. And, uh, yeah, look, at this point, it's worth the shot. It's worth the shot. Because I also say this, seven banks at 80% is probably just as good, if not better, than a lot of the defensive backs LSU has on the team right now, okay? This is not every other year in existence uh, at LSU in modern history. We don't have a bona fide first-round pick at corner. Now, we have some first-round potential talents at corner. We, we have a corner in Jarek Bernard Converse that has accomplished a lot at the Power 5 level, but this is the first time in, uh, I, I've, I mean, for, forever. Since you looked at that cornerback room and you're like, God, there, there's no one in here that I would say is a 100%, no doubt, top three round NFL draft pick. So it's 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 huge. It's absolutely huge. Even if you think the injury is hampering him, even if you think so, doesn't matter. So we'll see. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to. Mm, let's. I want to make sure I welcome everyone. John, good to see you, Mister Carter. Carl in Dallas. I'm really excited to see you, man. Uh, Dorian. Okay. I'm gonna block Reed soon if he doesn't change his avatar. Reed, I'm gonna bully you, and whatever you, 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 if you don't change your avatar, Reed. I think everyone in the world wants to know what Reed looks like uh, or him with a different avatar. As Carter seems like playing DB is more complex than ever with all to uh, with all the passing in today's game. So with ours, it's it's our DBs not tall enough or do you think they just need time to learn the system? It's a good question, Jason. And for me, Jason, this is uh, very key. Now, uh, this is kind of... Ironically, this is a little bit of a complex question because it depends on what your definition of complex is. Now, once again, take a look at Jason, a member of the PHL T-shirt club. Look at that. Huh? 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 And here's the thing. If you join the PHL T-shirt club, you get a bunch of goodies, including a Christian Lacatour auto card. You can see Conkis sets him rocking it with this PHL uh, goodie bag. So for me, I, I would say this and caucus. It is good to have you back. Defensive back is more complex. It is. 
It's hard as heck. I think uh, Marlon Humphrey of the Baltimore Ravens said quarterback is the second hardest position to play uh, than quarterback in the NFL. And I agree the same in the college level, especially with how good the receivers are, especially with the rise of seven on seven, especially with how much better quarterbacks are getting, especially Jason in context of the SEC, how good SEC coaching has become, especially on the offensive side of the football with Mike Leach, air raid innovator, Lane Kiffin is Lane Kiffin. And uh, here in a few years, if Sark gets a role in at Texas, Sark, uh, you know, there's a lot of offensive geniuses in, in the Southeastern Conference. And, you know, you got to have DBs. I think, Jason, what happened over the past couple of seasons is what really hurt LSU's defensive back room is a unbelievably simple and, quite frankly, laughably bad system that we ran okay it was inexcusable to run man coverage on every snap and you got i'm sorry for my diehards that have heard me say this a thousand times that set us back i really do think so that hurt your defensive back development i also think that's part of the reason why you would see some guys just kind of check out because they knew what they were doing wasn't working and you know it it, it sucked we go to a super chat here from Noah Grizz. He and his wife are also members of the PHL T-Shirt Club, but they have not sent me a photo. Seven Banks, yes. I was hoping he would join our Bayou Bengals. Think, uh, things went kind of quiet on him. Need to step the defensive back to help our younger, talented secondary. So, yes, things went quiet. LSU knew that he was coming all along. I can say that with near 110% certainty. I, I I put uh, I, the whole time I was like, okay, I'm 90% sure he's coming because, you know, guys can always back up, back out. But LSU felt pretty confident about that. I also think part of why LSU put a press on seven banks was they don't fully feel comfortable with their room right now. And we have to be completely honest with the defensive back room. Okay. We do. It's not where it needs to be. Okay? And that's perfectly fine. It's kind of like how running back has kind of become uh, at LSU. Now, Tidy's price at the end of the year was just as good as any SEC back, to be honest. But... Really, you know, we, we were spoiled. And and this was kind of what we talked about in the Corey Kiner video yesterday. You know, we were spoiled for so long because, you know, we had Jeremy Hill, Leonard Fournette, Darius Geis back to back to back. And then, you know, we had Clyde. We've had a lot of special at running back. And we kind of just assumed that to just be the norm. And the same thing is true about defensive back. And you can even go one step further. And I think a lot of you would agree with me. It's really rare that a team has good defensive backs. It's really, really, really rare. Okay. Every now and then you'll have, uh, let's take uh, Kentucky. The last year Matt House was there, they had two defensive backs going the first three rounds in the NFL. Every now and then you'll have a team that has like a few really good DBs, but LSU has every season, every single season has had unbelievable defensive back play. Or, I'll put it this, unbelievable defensive backs. Going back to a few seconds ago, the system was bad. Um, so, yeah, it's this is kind of uncharted territory for us. Not only with new defensive backs, but new defensive back coaches. Okay? So, the bottom line here, Nola Grizz, I totally agree with you. Seven banks is huge because... Someone coming in late in the process is going to rise the play of everyone else in the room, right? When the two younger guys come in uh, this summer, Jordan Allen and LaTerrence Welch, I like both of those guys a lot. It's going to rise the level of play in that room as well. And you can't forget the young man from Texas, the Thompson Robinson kid, 
who is faster than any of them. And also, I'd have to look this up. He He's healthier than any of them. I think he's had a pretty clean injury history. We'll, um, we'll see. We'll see. There we go. I love it. A little bit. Hey, everybody donated a, a $4.99 right now. Yeah, happy man. Huh? 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 Yeah, Carvage, this is kind of crazy. I was trying to, I, I should have charted this out earlier. So, last three years for certain, then Christian Fulton came in 2016. So, he technically wasn't on the team every year. So, Fulton, and then before Christian Fulton, So at least since 2016, before Christian Fulton, you had like, uh, you know, Jamal Adams, but he wasn't a wasn't a corner. Um, it depends what year Kevin Tolliver came in. Kevin Tolliver was a 2012 recruit. So yeah, it is kind of rare. The, your your point is still is still the same. Uh, now it depends if you think Sage Ryan is a corner. Uh, I think most of us was, would classify him as a nickel or safety. I think Carvis was talking about outside corner, field or boundary corner, whichever one you want to call it. Uh, so we'll see. There we go. Tyler says he he'll match. Tyler, I'm just wait. I'm just waiting for the Venmo trivia tonight. Stacy, good to see you. Once again, if I miss your comment, I'm, I'm sorry. We're getting so many flying in here. Uh, so, yeah. But, yeah, you know, for me, uh, to, to go along with um, uh, right here, Mark J, Christian Fulton was so underrated, right? And it's, it's strange because he was what? I mean, just depending on how you view the 2019 secondary, some of you probably think he was the best corner. Uh, on, I mean, he was really good. Uh, you could make a strong case that he was the best player in the secondary that year. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of strange. Like you, you had the two Arkansas transfers coming over, and Greg Brooks and, and Joe Fouché were they, they were good players at Arkansas. But the truth, and Chris, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Um, I was drinking out of. I, I actually I drink my punch out of my cup. Uh, Obviously, drinking Bud Light Seltzer hard soda uh, tonight because, you know, I, I normally drink these during Pels games. So, still. All right. Chris said he dropped a four ninety nine. Let's go. I one of you could drop a, a, a $19.99. Trey White was my favorite CB Tiger. There you go. John, I got I got a bunch of Trey White cards. Uh, no, he wasn't a five star, but he I think, and Chris, you could correct me on this. I think he was the highest rated player in his class. So, Trey White was in that thirteen class, and that was the uh, Trey White Ethan Posick class. That was that turned out to be a pretty good class. Was it? Was he? No, 2014's Fournette. So Trey White. Was 2013. He was the highest rated player in that class, if I'm not mistaken. And then 2012, the highest rated player in that class was Quan Alexander, I think. Skipper. There we go. They're flying in, baby. Let's go. I I agree and disagree with this, Carl. I do. I, I agree and disagree. Okay. So uh Skipper and Chris, you get to pick the next topic. Old vet, there you go. So any of you super chats get to pick the next topic. And Tyler, thank you so much for the super chat. Vin mode. Uh Tyler, let me know what you want your trivia question to be tonight. Um yeah, I get I have so many Tradavius White cards. So if you if you if John, if you if you want to get some stickers tonight, you can just follow along or shirt. I'll send you a lot of my Trey White collection. I'm also a big Ron Brooks fan, fan Mark. 
I, I knew Ron in high school. He was such a cool dude. So stars individually for individual players, they, they don't matter. They don't. For each individual player, all that matters is what you do on the field. Okay? But the truth is, overall, your star rankings do matter. Right? The four and five star um, classes. Thank you, Doc Knock. I appreciate you. You know, you've been rocking with me for a while now. So, let, let me ask you this. Type Y for yes, type in for no. Thank you so much, Rob. You still have my Craig Stelts card. Don't like it. You still have actually Rob has my Craig Stelts and my Matt Flynn Auto cards. I, to, I actually have to get another Matt Flynn Auto because I love that card so much. Huh? 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 Uh, but yeah, I'm blown away by this guy. Thank you so much. So type Y for yes, type in for no. Do recruiting stars matter to you? Type Y for yes, type in for no. So Tony, good to see you. No, Mark, I, I, if you if you get a shirt, and some of you know this, some of you sometimes don't donate, and I'll just randomly send cards. I give I give out so much of my stuff; it's crazy. Now I still have a lot. I'm very blessed to have a lot. Uh, there's towboat, towboat with the the youngin. Good to see you, man. Oh, welcome towboat back. Good to see you. Help. Oh. 50. So I'm going to go with Carvis here. It depends on, on, on the context. And there you go. This is my answer right here. Individual players, it doesn't matter. You individually. Look, I, I'm, I, I think Harold Perkins is going to be special. I think he's going to be, uh, and, and I'm also impartial to this, to Dorian. Okay. Louisiana players matter. I'm all about that. But the truth is, stars don't matter for individual players. So I think Harold Perkins is for real. I think he's really special. I think he's a truly special athlete. Where is he going to play? I don't know. That's kind of the scary thing. But if he doesn't prove it on the field, I, I could just be wrong. But time in and time out, the star rankings do matter as a consensus, right? So take Georgia, for instance, which, you know, it's been, along with Alabama, the best recruiter, and their results have spoken for themselves. You know, Georgia's, what, I would say their fifth best defensive lineman last year was, uh, thank you, Corey, for the super chat. Their fifth best defensive lineman last year was Nolan Smith. And Nolan, and he's like an outside linebacker type, but Nolan Smith is like an outside like he's a, he's a defensive line edge outside linebacker, like what BJ is going to play next year. He was the number one player overall. Let's just say Nolan Smith wasn't good at all. They still had a bunch of other five stars, right? So the depth of your five stars do matter. And overall, you do have to recruit at a certain level. History has shown us that. Uh, Bud Elliott's blue chip ratio, the amount of four stars you have percentage wise on your team, um, has predicted the national championship for a long time. Only Auburn with Cam Newton, who was superhuman, uh, won without you know uh, an elite blue chip ratio. Star ranking indicates athletic prowess and special talent. Now, if they put it all together, it will be determined by the player, coaching, and scheme, etc. Yeah, and look. Sometimes it could be a mixture of both, right? It could be it could be a mix. Uh, it, it could be kind of in the middle, where a player goes to a school, and that school is not necessarily the perfect scheme fit for that player, but they still turn out to be a good player. If you get what I'm saying, like here's a good example: Odo Beckham Jr. Okay. If Odo Beckham Jr. went to Texas Tech 
or if he went to uh, a more passing oriented offense that played at a faster pace, you know, he, he, he catches 150 passes like him at his peak. He, he would have caught 150 balls and, and, and would have been, you know, just ridiculous. Now he was still very, very good at LSU, but you know, the, that wasn't the absolute perfect system for his skill set. So sometimes those don't perfectly co- uh, coincide. Uh, so sometimes, you know, an individual player, there's very few of them that would be good anywhere. Like Kayshawn's an example of that. Mason Smith is, uh, is another example of that. But the system also really matters for you to succeed as well. Call me Larry. Yeah. Thanks again, Carvis, as always, for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. Cody, you still rocking the PHL shirts, baby. Let's go. Stars are a guesstimated indicator indicator of possibilities. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, Tyler, that's too easy of a trivia question. We'll go ahead and roll with it. I think this one's a, I think this one's a little too easy. Tyler, you're gonna have to give another one. But here we go. Who was the second LSU player to score a TD in the national championship game versus Clemson? So as always, if you're new to the chat, Tyler always does a super chat question to support the channel. Really appreciate it. So who is the second player to score in the national championship game? Kind of a trick question, though, for being honest. What's good, Billy? Who is the second LSU player to score in the national championship game? To score a touchdown in the national championship game. Versus Clemson. The second LSU player to score in the national championship game versus Clemson. Score a touchdown in the national championship game versus Clemson. It was Joe Burrow. Bang, bang. Terrace Marshall scored the last one. Okay. Pull up. Oh, should box score versus Clemson. Let's confirm this answer right here from Tyler. And the answer is indeed Joe Burrow. Quarterback draw on third down. Them legs. Gotta love it. We'll pull up the full depth chart here. Of course, Jamar scored the first one. There you go. I could zoom in a little bit more. Kind of a tricky question. You don't normally think of Joe Burrow's running. Jamar Chase scored first and third, and Thaddeus Moss scored the fourth, and then obviously... um, Harris Marshall put it away. And Moss, of course, had the the four-yard out.
So Tyler, I guess the trivia question was a little bit more challenging. Joey B. There you go, Tyler. Look at that. Yeah, Jefferson did not score, but he did have a really good game. Hmm. Yeah, the Terrace Marshall touchdown was great. Let's see? Too many examples of players overperforming for their rating and others underperforming. Uh, may, I guess I guess this is in result to these star ratings. I guess if you're a five star recruit, we're expecting you at the very least to be an all conference player. All right, let's see Dwayne. Look, Dwayne finally updated the photo. I love it. I'm just bullying everybody. Look at Dwayne. Got the pearly whites, got the sunglasses, got the LSU hat going on. I love it. All right, who's next? Who, who am I going to bully into changing their photo next? Larry Dorian? Let's see it. Just trying to figure out who's joining the PHL T-shirt club. By the way, get an Odo Beckham Jr. card. Also, Christian Lacatour autographed numbered card to 99. This is my first number 18 auto. I'm giving out. I'm kidding. I give away Jacob Hester to somebody. Uh, you're getting both of these cards and more. All right. So, Tyler, uh, with another super chat here. All right. This one's actually uh, kind of tricky. What was the largest point differential victory in the entire 2019 season? All 15 games. Which was the highest point differential of the 2019 season? Okay. Pierce Lee checking in late from work. What's up? I think I know the answer to this. Um, I think I do. OU was 62 to 28. So... I think it's 62 to 28. So would it be uh would it be that game? 62 to 28. No, didn't we beat Northwestern by a lot? Wasn't that final score like 65 to 14 or something like that? Banks is CB1. Yeah, I'm thinking, I, this is my guess. I'm thinking it's Northwestern State, and they actually, I think they actually were leading after the first quarter. Um, dang, was AM 51 to zero? Was that the final score? I know they averaged like two yards per play. I've got to know the answer to this. Um, Okay, 43. Uh, so AM was 43 points. So it wasn't Oklahoma. My guess was Northwestern State. The final score was 65 to 14. Oh, 
I know it. I see it right here. See it right here. Huh? 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 Oh, man. This is the uh, correct answer. What's up, Tony? Good to see you. Uh, 65 to 14 is 51. It is Georgia Southern, a 52 point beatdown. Huh? 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 The very first game of the season. It's kind of crazy when you really think about it, right? Uh, yeah, that's that's nuts. Uh, A&M was 50 to 7, so I was 43. Yeah, it's it, it was uh, Georgia Southern. It's nuts. What what makes that really crazy, uh, Jared? What's up, Jared? What makes that really crazy is that was one of Joe Burrow's two games where he – okay, so let's let, – all right, I'm going to give you a trivia question, okay? Joe Burrow threw for 300 yards in every game in 2019 except for two – ironically, Georgia – Southern, which was the biggest victory of the season, as we just figured out with Tyler's tricky trivia question, was one of them. Joe Burrow threw for 278 yards. Now, he also threw for five touchdowns and no interceptions, so he played perfect. But can you name the other game where Joe Burrow did not throw for 300 yards? Can you do it? I want to see who gets this right, because this one's actually kind of tricky. Yeah, Pegasus, I, I I I get this one a lot, right? And I've actually pushed for this. More football during the spring, okay? No, I, 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 I've, I've kind of pushed back. I'm still four seven-on-seven seven tournaments in the offseason, uh, but still. Let's see, I don't think I've seen the correct answer yet. All right, Pierce, that's pretty intense. Huh? 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 Oh, man. Let's see it. Do we got Dez got it. I think Dez was our first guest. No, Vandy that drove through for a lot versus Vandy. Uh, it was Florida. So, uh, Florida for 293. So, Joe threw for 278 versus Georgia Southern. He threw for. Uh, 293 versus Florida. Now, what was interesting about the Florida performance was that was one of his better rushing performances on the season. So he ran for a lot of yards. Um, and also, Florida was actually one of his better games, right? Utah State or Texas 8-4. and four. It's crazy. No, Joe threw for a lot versus 8-4. and four. He hit Jamar on that deep ball. It was so beautiful. Uh and Utah State, you know, he hit Justin on that deep touchdown. And obviously, he was prolific in that game. Uh, and Jordan Love only went for six points. I'm still shocked that the Packers wasted that pick on him, but this isn't an NFL channel. Don't forget, my my SEC channel is coming out soon. Been working on that. Uh, we'll probably release that when I get back uh, from vacation. Now, what makes the Florida game very interesting was on a yard per play basis, that was LSU's second best offensive game in terms of efficiency. So we'll do one more trivia question. If I remember this correctly, there was two games where LSU averaged at least 10 yards per play offensively, and Florida was one of them. Can you name the other game? LSU offensively averaged at least 10 yards per play. I'll make sure let me make sure I'm pulling this up correctly. But yeah, that was actually one of Joe's better games. He ran for a lot of yards that game. Okay. And let me see. Yeah, okay. So Florida was one of two games where LSU averaged at least double digit yards per play, which is an obscene amount. Okay. 
Can you name the other game where LSU averaged at least double digit yards per play? Okay. It, it's kind of hard. This one's also kind of tricky. So the Florida game's a good reminder that LSU's defense was not good in the first half of that game. And Florida had a lot of long drives. So they had these long drives that took up a lot of time off the clock. And of course we had that red zone turnover at the end. So Florida uh, had a lot of possession. So versus Florida, we only had 48 plays offensively. So uh, just, uh, just for reference versus Auburn, our worst offensive game of the year by far, we had 88 plays. So we ran 40 fewer plays. Let's see. Can you name the only other team that LSU averaged double-digit yards per play? And then we'll get back into more current stuff. Uh, Oklahoma is incorrect. Um, I'm still waiting to see if someone can get the correct answer here. Um, And yards per play is a little trickier um, because, you know, it's it's hard it, it, because there's a lot of garbage time at the end. So you're kneeling down. That counts against your yards per play. Uh, it is not Ole Miss. It was not Texas. Okay, The only other team, I'll put it this way. This was the worst team on LSU's Power 5 schedule. Okay? The worst team on LSU's Power 5 schedule. Okay? There's only two games where LSU, and I say only two. There's a lot of teams that never average double-digit yards per play. LSU had 10.6 versus Florida. Can you name the other team that LSU averaged double-digit yards per play? Not Vandy. It was not Georgia. It's not Utah State. Boom. Dez is two for two tonight. It's Arkansas. There you go. Arkansas, we averaged 12.6 yards per play, which is crazy. Um, so, yeah, that's wild. <laughs> I'll pull it up right here. Uh See here, this is via sports reference right there. So I uh, the number one stat I look at out of the basic stats uh, is yards per play. It's not a, it's it's not a stat that you normally go look look at. Obviously, if you're a fan of the channel, you know I'm a super diehard about yards per play. Um, so yeah. There you go. Oklahoma was number three. Northwestern State was number four. So just for reference, uh, LSU's historically bad defense in 2020 gave up seven yards per play in eight out of ten games. Okay? Seven is really bad. If an offense is getting seven yards per play, you, uh, you, you are killing it. Okay? So... The thing, part of the reason why the Arkansas and Florida yard per play numbers are inflated is right here, the number of plays, okay? So just for reference, you see Auburn was our worst offensive game, even though we ran the second most amount of plays. If you take a look at yards per play, that was the only game where we didn't have at least 6.5 yards per play. So I'll let you know how good Auburn played against us. Um you know, that was the only game where we just did not kill it offensively. Uh, so, yeah, and it, it's crazy to think about. Um, so, yeah. All right, John, good to see you, man. Let's go, pals. I, as you guys know, I'm a big Pelicans fan. I might actually be getting to go to the game Sunday. Uh, me Madre has a doctor's appointment in Louisiana. All right, KJ, it was good to see you again. So there you go. But yeah, uh, we've gotten a lot of uh, five dollars super chat. So hopefully, I answered all your questions. You guys blame Tyler for all the trivia. I'm kidding. 
Utah State or Texas eight and four. Lucky is letting me know, asking me who's going to have a better record next year, and we all know that's going to be Utah State. You know it. Let's. Hey, they're both Aggies. Let's go. Call me Larry Russell Shepard. Oh, Russell Shepard. We're Russell Shepard stands on this channel. It's tough, man. But yard per play, I mean, that's that's just it's a nerdy stat. There's Billy changing the photo. I like it, man. It is a little annoying, Pegasus, because obviously Kenny Pickett is getting compared to Joe Burrow like crazy right now because they both had the fifth-year senior outbreak. So it is what it is. But yeah, to average double-digit yards per play, you have to hit explosive plays for that to happen. So, you know, like Arkansas and Florida, we only had 48 plays in each of those games. Uh, biggest five-star bust. Someone said Eric Gilbert a minute ago. That's just not true. Like, he caught 35 passes. That was a true freshman record for any tight end until, you know, Brock Bowers last year. Eric Gilbert wasn't a bust, right? I, I think a five-star bust bust is someone that didn't do anything i think that would be your definition of a bust um so i i guess you know maybe maybe chris davenport i but i like chris i mean he was around lsu the whole tenure i mean he just didn't pan out so maybe i would consider eric gilbert a bigger bust because he was such a headache uh, to deal with. And I do think part of Ed Orgeron's fall was, and, and Eric Gilbert's a very extreme example, but uh, because, you know, that was probably going to happen no matter what, was the mismanagement of a player's. I-10 Roman! Yeah, so like Clifton Garrett, right? That would be a good that would be a good one. Um, so like, uh, unless you're like a super duper diehard recruiting fan, every five star bus is going to be someone that you, that you had no idea who they were. Now Malachi Dupree should have stayed for another year. I don't know if I can call him a bus though. I mean, look, back to back. 40 catch seasons, right? In that middle 2010 less miles offense with Brandon Harris at quarterback, 40 catches is a lot. Tyron Johnson, look, I'm going to defend Tyron Johnson as well. His dad specifically said, we are transferring because this offense sucks. It's not because of less personally. It's not because of the players on the team. It's because the offense sucked. And yes, Tyron Johnson was a bust for LSU standards. They gave him the Odell number three and all that stuff. He was he was a bust because he wanted to get targets. And that 2014 class had Trey Quinn and Malachi Dupree. And, you know, that was when we played a lot of just two receiver sets, fullback, tight end, running back. So he wanted to go somewhere where he could play. And this would be this would be the one position I would say LSU is never going to run out of wide receivers. You're just not. I just don't ever see it happening. There's just I mean, Sheldon Sampson looks unbelievable. Uh, they're just never going to run out of it I, I until I see it. I just don't think it's ever going to happen. I, I I would tell any receiver that is sixth or seventh or eighth on a depth chart, 
if you think you can go get Target somewhere else, go get go, go get yours. It's, it, I say give it two years at a program. If you're seventh or eighth on the depth chart, go get yours. Go get yours. You know, go somewhere where you're going to get targets. And, you know, Tyron Johnson turned out to be a really good player. Like he, he lasted in the league a lot longer than I thought, and he turned out to be a really good player at Oklahoma State. And honestly, the biggest bust is the guy that transfers to Alabama. <laughs> Mitch Mustaine. I like that, John. Huh? 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 Yeah. So I, I, I wanted, what's up, My, uh, Marvin? Good to see you, man. Craig Lawson was solid. Now, was he five star? No, but he was good. Craig Lawson was good. Now, I knew Craig somewhat. Well, and we lived in the same apartment complex. Uh, so, yeah, Malachi Dupree was good. I do think you have two scholarships left. I do think part of Malachi Dupree's decline was, uh, was the offense. The same thing with Tyron Johnson. If you're Tyron Johnson... Okay. Let me ask you this. Would you prefer to play at LSU or would you go prefer to play with Mike Gundy, which is where he went? And he turned out to be the third or fourth option on that team. And he still caught 50 passes. Uh, I think he caught 53 passes his final year. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> I want to go somewhere where I can get the ball, right? Less wanted Jamar Chase to play DB. He wanted Dak Prescott to play tight end. Hmm. And I don't. I don't think he got those evaluations right. I don't know what you guys think about that. in the seven banks poll. All right. So I think there's still a fair amount of you that voted in the se seven uh, uh, banks poll. If you voted no, that seven banks is not the best outside corner on this team. Who is, who, who is a better corner than seven banks on this team? I, I could see an argument made for Bernard Converse. I can Ryan Perry is a bust just based on ceiling, but in actuality, he's not a bust because he was a key component of a national championship team. So, uh, so he wasn't a bust. Now, did it turn out to be a disaster? Yes. But to me, a bust is someone who does next to nothing for a team. Oh, don't do Elias Rick's jokes. Don't do that. Quit playing games with my heart. In games with my heart. And playing games with my heart. We're playing. Ooh, Michael, that's a no, that's a juicy question. So that would be between Demarius McGee and Ray Darius Jones.
kind of like that that meme of that white guy that looks like Dexter Morgan on Twitter. Yeah, if you know what I'm talking. If if you're if you're on the internet as much as I am. Chance, welcome to the channel. Al Woods, that's not bad if you consider how long and solid his NFL career has been. He just never uh, dominated. He just never dominated at, at LSU. He was just there, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, that dude was heck. I mean, that dude was an unreal athlete. So he, he he wasn't a bust. Like he still played and he was fine. He just like he he, he there, there was never like a moment in time at LSU that you were like, goodness gracious, this guy is the next Howie Long. Freak's a good one. He should have stayed for a senior year, but based on hype alone, he did actually make second team all SEC. Matt Toronto, boom! That lets you know you watch the videos. I love it, baby. I'm looking at you right now, Matt Toronto. Looking at you. Cosmos! Johnny Five, what's good? No, Big Fave was good, and he also wasn't a five-star. Actually, I don't, I don't remember. No, Big Fave was solid. Got himself a Super Bowl ring, too. Miles killed a lot of careers. I agree. I do. I really do think that. Uh, I do think this, right? Obviously, you know, Miles ended up doing uh, nefarious things, right? And, you know, it came out, whatever. I think something else on just a football level that hurt Miles' legacy is, well, Ed Orgeron winning a championship, right? And, you know, I I think at the time, I, I feel like our society, Marvin, is just smarter. We, we, we know more about certain things. Um, part of it is just society's progress. And part of it is just the internet. Right, we're able to go look up stats. We're able to go look up data, and the the, the truth is, is less after that 2011 season was just always on a decline. And yes, he still won 10 games. Yes, he still had a lot of success. Yes, he still put a lot of players in the pros. But a lot of people with the keys to the Ferrari that is the state of Louisiana would have done the same thing, if not more. And the failure to change is something that you give Ed Orgeron a lot of credit because uh, he actually did change up the offense. Uh, there's two spots left, Jojo. Appreciate you, Kansas. Thank you for the support. Go Pels. Yeah, for sure. Definitely top three. I'll take it. New poll question is up. It's our first ever NBA poll question. Uh, Mark J, don't come on, please. This is this. Uh, there's kids watching. No, there's no need to bring up Gary Crown. Wait, do, do, do you, we don't want our kids asking us at night. I don't have any kids, but we don't we don't want our our friends and family like bumping our shoulders. Who is Gary Crowden? Come on, Mark. We're past those days.
Matt Toronto. Mason, most dominant player on defense. I hope so. Hope so. Hope so. Honestly, though, Mason Smith is not the answer you want it to be, Matt Toronto, if that makes sense. Who you want to be the best player on the defense is a different question. And the guy that you want to be the best player on LSU's defense. Well, let, let me let me say this. Let, let me ask you this. In a perfect world, who would be LSU's best player on defense? Okay? Comment down below. Who do you think in a perfect world? And I want you to think about Matt House's defensive history. Would be LSU's best player on defense. There we go. Max continued the 499 train. I like it. I like it. Boom. Great minds think alike. We'll get back to BJ Ojalar in just a second. People really hate Brian Kelly. They especially want to see him succeed even more. Shut their mouths. Yeah, the Notre Dame saltiness is not going to stop. It's just not going to stop. And this LSU Notre Dame rivalry, which, you know, it's not really a rivalry. We, we won't play them unless we meet them in the playoffs, which we won't. But still, still though, Max, it, I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't know why Notre Dame fans are still so salty about it. If you think Marcus Freeman is the next uh, Lou Holtz, then don't worry about us. But yeah, obviously Harold Perkins has extremely high upside, and he's probably going to play the same position as B.J. Ojolari. But the guy that you want to be the best player on LSU's defense is B.J. Ojolari. Now, why is that? I truly do believe just... Years watching, you know, three, four defenses. If you have a good Jack linebacker, it changes everything. It changes everything. Okay. And the reason why I, I say that is because, well, look. The SEC had uh, Will Anderson carry that Alabama defense. Matt House's Kentucky defense with Josh Allen was transcendent. Now, Georgia had Nolan Smith. He's a really good player. And they had really, you know, the, the key to that team was a three defensive lineman that played the interior. But it takes all three of those guys to dominate. I think that Jack linebacker in the 3-4 just does so much for your defense because there's so many things that that guy can do after the snap of the football. So we'll see. Aziz, his older brother. I like that, man. I didn't think about that. That's a good point. But yeah, I, I think so, Max. I, I uh, And that's fine. He, he, here's my thing, Max. I'm I'm a very uh, I'm I'm a very open-minded LSU fan. I'm perfectly fine, and you are too. I'm perfectly fine with people being skeptical of Brian Kelly because it is such a a, a, a big transition uh, for him. But at the same time, I do think and and. This this is very key. When the season starts, it's going to be very important to get behind this team, right? Especially for that first game because we see how important that first game is. A lot of our worst seasons have come when we lost that first game. Who can never forget the Lambeau uh, game? 
huh? versus Wisconsin. Derek Davis and Sage Ryan, they're still out there. George, it just depends on how people view his medicals. It really does. There you go. But once again, thanks as always to Jared, one of the top super chatters here on PHL. Really do appreciate you, my friend. So we are up to the one and a half hour mark. We're close to it. Here's what we always do when we get to this point. I answer as many questions as I possibly can in the next five minutes. It does not have to be LSU football related, so feel free to um, fire away, fire away. And, of course, our spring practice coverage and live streams are presented by Presley Collection and PresleyCollection.com. We saw a dev. Chris, uh, feel better soon. I'll check in on you tomorrow, man. Uh, just got done watching my heat slant the Hawks around. I'm doing good, Dev. What is it? That's a 2-0 series now? I do not have a Maravich rookie card. I haven't really checked on the, the Maravich market. What channel will the spring game be on? I don't know. Uh, Seven Banks commitment is big. We talked about him most of the night. So, Edward O, once his live stream ends pretty soon, you'll be able to start from the beginning and you'll uh, get everything you need to know. Uh, for me. We don't have a Pete Maravich uh, rookie card. What do the Pels need next year? Who can we get for our first uh, Lakers first and Graham? Well, I'm always going to answer this the same way I answer every NBA question. You can never have enough three and D guys, right? They always have, you know, decent post players with Hayes and Valachunas. Three and D, right? It just depends on how you view, feel about Trey Murphy and those guys. So we get to hear, hopefully, BJ can be better than what Chason was. Chason to be underachieved and was overrated for how much hype and talent he had. Yes and no. I, I think Chason played the role that Aranda had for him which is a run and chase leader, right? I think also, Max, as the season moved on, Chase on got better. And I'll give Kayle Von Chase on this. He played his absolute best at the end of the season, right? He had a, you know, he had a pretty good game versus Bama, uh, had a few big plays in that game. And then, you know, Clemson, Georgia, AM, those games at the end of the year, he was just on fire. Uh, you know, obviously. You know, Chase on at the NFL, I was kind of cold on him coming out just simply because the sack numbers and he's not a natural bender as a pass rusher, but hopefully that comes around. Uh, and it might. It might. Golden Boot was good. Yeah, uh, SEC, uh, the LSU game will be on SEC Plus, I'm sure. You can find it on YouTube illegally somewhere. Bryce Langston is uh, not. He was supposed to be like Will Anderson at a high school. Maybe – so Chason was a top 50 player. Will Anderson was like a top 10 five-star. But I, I do agree, Max. Could Chason have, have had better sack numbers? M maybe. But then again, I, I do think Aranda, as that season moved on, 
just said, F it, I'm just going to become an exotic blitzing team. And he got he, he manufactured his rushes by bringing in different personnel on third and long and whatnot. I also think the year before the 2018 injury to Chase on, it was pretty devastating for him. So, yeah, as Pegasus uh, pointed out. But in his in his his Twitter name is like Sat Guru. So if you have a Twitter name that is Sat Guru, uh, I, I would hope you're you're Reggie White. If you're not Reggie White, then then don't have Sat Guru as your name. But he was a great leader. He was number eighteen, and he was a really good player. He was arguably the most valuable player of that front because there weren't really that many players that could play that role. So he was a good player. He was a really good player. And one of the best names ever at LSU. Appreciate these super chats here at the end. Max and Garrett always holding it down. Here's the issue, though. Max and Jared, I have been trying my hardest to get someone to join the PHL T-shirt club. And I know there are some shirtless PHLers watching this live stream. Brandon, good to see you. Think Jimmy Butler went for 45 tonight? So, shirts sure 40 bucks. All you got to do is follow the information down there. It's really good is I'm get I'm sending you both of these cards right here. You get an Odell and you're also getting a Caleb on Chase on. Oh yeah, uh a Caleb on Chase on. It is also number 18. You're getting a Christian like a tour autograph card. No, not at this point. No. Donald, good to see you. Jack, this is your chance. If you're just shirtless, all you have to do, the shirt would get there in like three days. I could send you a shirt in three days, man. I will give you proverbially the shirt off my back <laughs> if you wanted to. Jimmy Butler going for 45. I love that man. I love that man. Huh? 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 Two shirts is better. Like Nola Grizz. Nola Grizz got two shirts. One for him and his wife. So, in actuality, it's better to get a shirt for you and the wifey. John, I'll, for the extra five, I'll throw some 2019 guys in your thing. If you want it. Here's what we'll do, John. Shoot me an email, John. We'll, uh, we'll work something out, okay? Huh? 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 Grand oh. granddaughter, granddaughter's popping out tomorrow.
I have a question. Okay, before before I go watch this Pelicans game. Why why are taxes such a sham? Why why are taxes such a sham? Why can't the government just send you how much you owe? And I, and I watch a Hassan Minaj episode on this, and I know like how it all works. It just blows my mind how complicated this stuff is. Blows my mind. Tyler, if you really believe it, you should go sprinkle s- some cash on Joe Burrow for MVP next year. The truth is, Skipper, I, I think Skipper is the only member of the um uh the, the, I, I think Skipper is the only member of the three PHL t shirt club. I think he's the only one. Type Y for yes, type in for no. Joe Burrow wins the NFL MVP next year. Type Y for yes, type in for no. I actually do think they're going to run the football a little bit more with Joe Mixon. Because, uh, you know, they'll have Lyle Collins back. Or they're getting Lyle Collins. There you go, John. Oh, you want Trey White cards? I got you on a Trey White. All right, John joined the PHL T-shirt club. Let's go. Throw some clap emojis for John. Let's go. I was hoping to get a PHL T-shirt club member in the thing tonight. Let's go, John. Let's go. Let's go. Shoot me an email. PHL T-shirt club. Welcome to the club, John. You want Trey White cards? I got you on some Trey White cards. I got a big Trey White collection. I'm going to hook you up, man. Hook you up. Write that down. Ask anyone. I don't shortchange you on cards. <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna you're gonna get some cards and give to the kids or whatever. Oh, I forgot to. You also get a sticker. Look at this, John. You're joining Skipper. You're joining Skipper. So our PHL T-shirt club members. My goal is to get Tyron Matthew in a PHL shirt. That's my goal. There's me and Skip right there. Joe Burr. Huh? 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 So, John, shoot me an email, and uh, I'll get your address, and uh, we'll chat, man. Let's go. Thank you, John. I appreciate you, man. I got a lot of Joe Adai cards. I send so many uh, Joe Adais. Um, but yeah, my, Mike knows about Joe Adai cards. Uh, Max, you're part, of the, you're part of the t-shirt club, man. You know how much it means to me when you guys rock my merch. Gets me excited, man. Gets the people going. Maturana, walk on. Do it, man. 
Get your butt on the team. I don't think there's many trending holiday cards. Let me actually look this up. I used to have a trending holiday uh, shirt. Yeah, look, there are a few trending holiday cards. He's just my favorite player. Yeah, Pierre, shoot me an email. I'll let you know how much it's worth, man. You need a PHL and Carter TP collab in my life? Carter TP. I don't know. See, baby. What's wrong, baby? I'm so hot. I'll get it. I don't know why she. Come on. Come on. You can bring bring her here. Come here. I'll hold her. I'll hold her this way. Come on. No, it's okay. Come on. Just bring her here. Baby, if we're, I'm, I'm live. Come on. Get her. The bed. She 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 doesn't make any more appearances there. Are what? You about, are you about to go watch the game? Yes. Okay. Why is she being so feisty? I don't know. She Why is she so... You didn't calm her down. I'm trying to. Huh? 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 Yeah, did y'all see that? Huh? Huh? Uh, out of my league. Um, out of my league. Is that a... Is that the movie with... Um, What movie, what movie is out of my league? That's the movie with, with Rosie O'Donnell, right? Let's see. What's the, what's the, the baseball movie with? Okay, that's a league of their own. It's a classic movie. Okay, that's a league of their own. Oh, Nick, oh, Nick's a killer. Yeah. Yeah, Nick's I've I've I I think I've followed him on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, but Le League of Their Own is uh Yeah, that's. I was like out of my league. I was like, man, I'm, I don't know. Yeah, there's so many like. Uh, there's so many LSU YouTube channels out there, right? So I try my best to be different. I try my best to you know provide the best analysis I possibly can, and uh, I, I've been in the LSU media game for a long time. Uh, there's no crying in baseball, <laughs> huh? Huh? Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Had so much fun. I was on the Golden Boot Pod this past Sunday night. It was a good time. Uh, Madonna. Uh, who else was in it? Madonna, Tom Hanks. Was Tom Hanks in that movie? Look at that. Great mind thinks alike. 
There's no crying in baseball. Julia Roberts? I love it. Top breakout player for next year? Mm. Let's go Trey Bradford. Jared, I feel like that's a shot at me for a one hour and 41 live stream. Yeah, it is. He shows better. It's not a one hour and 41 minute thing. Huh? 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 Uh, Derek Davis Jr. I hope you're right. I haven't seen the League of Their Own in, in, in forever. Oh, Gina Davis. But yeah, shout out to Nick. I, I, I was out of my league. I was like, wait, that's that's the name. I was like, how can I collab with a movie that was made like 30 years ago? Uh, at this point, yes, yes. And shout out to all the LSU YouTube channels and all the college football YouTube channels. So here in a few weeks, I am starting a new YouTube channel, which will be more SEC, uh, around the SEC uh, kind of channel. Uh, because look, a lot of you privately ask me about name, image, and likeness. A lot of you privately ask me about, what do you think about Texas A&M? What do you think about Tennessee? And it, it, and you'll see those kind of questions in the chat. And I normally stay away from those questions because I do have analytics and I'm able to go see when people drop in and out of chats. Once I start talking about another team for too long, people just drop out. They just do. So if I start another SEC channel, you guys can ask me about any SEC team. Now, I'm not going to know as much about uh, Tennessee as, you know, whoever the top Tennessee guy is. Um, I'm not going to know as much about Alabama as touchdown Alabama. But, you know, it's it's hard to keep up with all the teams. So it's going to be uh, a, a little bit more general, okay? Now. Um, I, I'm not Josh Pate. He does all of college football. I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I, I could not do that. That's really hard to do, right? I think it, I think it's near impossible. I think you can do all the NFL. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to a new channel. It's going to look different. Obviously we're going to keep the LSU channel the way that it is. The SEC channel is going to be very general. It's not going to be as, heavily edited as some of our videos are. I want to keep doing what we're doing on PHL, but part of it is expanding. Um, and part of it is, you know, uh, during the off season times can get tough and, um, and yeah, you know, it's, uh, I, I want to start a new venture and maybe potentially that, that could help my platform because right now I, I'm an independent creator and for the most part, I've been very fortunate to get to do some stuff with the SPN. I've been very fortunate to get to do some stuff uh, uh, for Sirius XM. And I, I worked for Bleach Report for a while. I've been lucky to, to work with some of the biggest sports media companies. But it, it's it's really hard to be independent. Like your, your money fluctuates um, from month to month. And it can get very brutal <laughs> during the offseason. And, uh, and yeah, so, you know, I'm looking into, uh, new avenues to create more content and, uh, you know, obviously potentially produce more revenue. And I know the SEC channel is going to take a while to build. So I'm going to need your help with that, uh, guys and gals. And we'll see, we'll see, maybe it flops. Maybe it turns out to be good. Alice, Eve, and. I've never heard of these actresses, actor and actress, I think, unless Jay and Alice, I, I don't know. 
But I like that, Rob. I need to go back and watch Adam Ali again. Will Zion be in a Pels jersey in two years? That's a loaded question. Yes. Because CJ McCollum is going to take that next step. Appreciate you, LSU fan. There's a lot of great LSU channels out there. A lot. Some of them have more resources than me. Um, some some of them uh, sound and look a lot different than mine as well. And <laughs> get that bag. I wish I was getting a bag. <laughs> I wish. And Max, honestly, you, especially you and Jared, I mean, you guys, I mean, it's just crazy how generous you've been. Uh, to me, right? Uh, I really do appreciate it. It really does go a long way. I never take it for granted that I get paid to talk about LSU football uh, as a full-time job. Just please don't be as crypto. Hey, I'm actually learning crypto. I'm learning more about cryptocurrencies. Uh, I know that a lot of people have lost money. I'm I'm big into sports collecting, and when the sports card boom began, it was a lot like crypto. People were just throwing a bunch of money at stuff that they didn't had no idea what they were talking about, and they lost big time. I'm gonna need a second job. SEC channel is gonna just be more fun, right? Can Jose Alvarado develop into a starting point guard in the next four years? No, I think a lot of what he is as a player makes him a good backup guard. High energy, very quirky. He makes you do things differently when he's on the floor. I don't know if he's a starter. He's definitely not a guy that can go get you a bucket, right? But he's got a decent shot. He could space the floor. He's got a great attitude. You could probably get him a good value. So, yeah, I mean... Could he start some games? Yes, but I wouldn't want him to be my starting point guard. Oh, I know, Dorian. You'd be able to retire now. Rob, you want a camo PHLT with the emblem? I like that. I Actually, I like that idea. No, John, I, I don't play games in the background. Part of it is that I don't have a TV in here. Um, but I try my best to stay focused on you guys. You guys are giving me your time. I owe it to you guys for me to be focused on you. Now, sometimes I'm looking at other stuff or looking at a game or whatever. If it was in the fourth quarter of the game, uh, which I doubt that is where it is right now, I, I'd be looking. I'm a big Pelicans fan. I'm I'm probably going to be making the trip on on sunday uh I, I love this team i do they're they're 
probably my number three favorite franchise in sports. So LSU is number one. Liverpool is number two, and the Pelicans are number three. Now, there's other teams that I like. I've always liked uh, Michigan State basketball with Mateen Cleese. That was one of my favorite teams growing up. I was also, uh, but I'm not so much a Michigan State basketball fan. I grew up a big Yankees fan. I was a diehard Yankees fan. But when Jeter and Rivera retired, I was like, nah, don't really care about it anymore. It was just, I, I just don't. I couldn't even tell you the Yankees record right now. And that's with one of their best players being an LSU player on the 2009 title team. Uh, I I just can't get back into being a super diehard Yankees fan. I always like them. I always appreciate them. Jeter and Rivera were my two favorite athletes growing up. Just, you know, not my thing. And obviously I'm always going to be a Saints fan, but, you know, during the season, as you guys know, the LSU plays on Saturday, on Sunday, I'm grinding a, a film study for Sunday nights. So I can't really watch the Saints unless they're primetime Thursday night or whatever. So it's it's tough. It's really tough. Are you getting to go? That's cool, John. That's cool. Huh? Huh? So for those that don't know, John, I do want I do want to say this. Um, I'll answer this in a second, Pegasus. So for those that didn't watch our live stream, that got kind of weird uh, last Thursday. So on Wednesday for the play-in game last week, my buddy got pickpocketed, and it had his phone and it had our tickets on it. Uh, he lost his phone wallet. His phone was like one of those cases with the wallet on it. And uh, when he did the find my iPhone, the phone was in New Orleans East. So he was able to get a new phone and, uh, you know, life moves on. He's fine. Um, I just say that once again, if you are going to the basketball game, be careful. Also, if you're going to the spring game. Be careful, okay? This might be anecdotal, but there's a lot of mischievous stuff happening uh, in Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Just be careful. I never asked you why Liverpool. Okay, so I'll, I'll share this story. So in 2005, I was out playing soccer with... Um, my buddies and I was a sophomore in high school, uh, graduated at 07, sophomore, junior, whatever. And the, I was watching, this was when like soccer was starting to come on ESPN and stuff like that. And, you know, Americans, we just weren't all that fair. We, we just weren't all that familiar with European soccer. So I remember going outside with my friends during the AC Milan Liverpool game and AC Milan in the Champions League final in Istanbul, Turkey was up three to zero. Okay. And we were outside playing uh, soccer. So I was with two of my buddies and we were playing soccer uh, in uh, my, my next door neighbor's yard. They had a big yard and they, uh, we were playing soccer and then my mom started screaming at me she was like hey carter do you know that the game is tied because we we were glued to the tv it was all so new to us european soccer it was so cool seeing soccer at the highest level played on tv and then we we're like mom we're going outside to play soccer the game sucks three to zero she she's yelling at us she was like carter the game is tied and liverpool came back and won the match despite being down 3-0 to AC Milan, who was the number one team in the world at the time. And that comeback just made me fall in love with Liverpool, seeing the fans like doing what they did and just that comeback. And I said, I'm never counting out Liverpool again. And it was that day that I was like, this is my team, right? Because whenever you start becoming a fan and you're an American, you have no ties to any teams, right? 
So obviously a lot of American fans are going to be Chelsea fans now because of Pulisic or Juventus fans because of McKinney. Um, I'm a Liverpool fan just because of that. Honestly, it was that. <laughs> I was like, that's cool. A three nil comeback in the biggest stage possible. And, uh, and yeah, and it, I was fine with it. I was fine with it. Um, you know, I was very fortunate, you know, early on in my my career, my college years, uh, I got to meet Sir Alex Ferguson, and I, I got to do some really cool European soccer things. But, uh, but yeah, I love the sport. It's my favorite thing. And when we're going to England, I will say this, it's going to be a desperate attempt because I doubt anybody here is going to do this, all right, or know this. And it's part of the reason why I need your Super Chats as well. So... We're going to England. Uh, it's a dream trip for for Haley, and it's a dream trip for me because obviously I'm a big Liverpool fan. She's a big Harry Styles fan. It's our two favorite things. Outside of LSU football for me, Liverpool's number two. So, you know, we're in a title race, and I, I, I Liverpool tickets are very expensive, and we are going to Liverpool, and we will be in there May 7th for the Liverpool-Tottenham game. So I'm just throwing this out here. If anyone knows any ticket connects for Liverpool, if anyone knows anywhere where I can go find tickets to this, I will love you forever, right? If any of you know this, I'll, I'll send you a shirt. I'll send you a borough card. I'll send you whatever. I, I, I've got to go. This is in my bucket list, and this is the only time I think I'll ever even get the chance uh, to go to England, right? Uh, I saved up for this trip. And I'm hoping I can find tickets to the match because it's so much bigger now that Liverpool's back in the title race. Um, are you going to? Oh, cool, Caucus. That's that's cool. Yes, yeah, StubHub. I I don't know. I don't know. Yes, yeah, StubHub. Well, I'm, I'm looking at that stuff, and I, I've been reading about fraud and all this. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Just in case somebody watching, like, knew. Uh, that, dude, it's different. It's so hard. It's so hard. It's my favorite team. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to find a way. Well, all right, guys. Appreciate all the super chats. Thank you so much. Let's see. This is crazy. Wait, Anthony at Phil's Oyster Bar can get tickets to anything? So Phil's Oyster Bar is actually my favorite place to go in Baton Rouge. John, shoot me an email if you know this Anthony guy. Huh? 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 Well, I have your email. Kaka, shoot me an IG message. I'm still learning about all this myself. Got to go, though. I'm going to cry if I actually get a chance to go. That's all I'm worried about. My case is excited. Eh, I get to go to England. Or, I, don't, I just want to see Liverpool. That's all I freaking care about. And you'll never. Oh, come on, Pelicans. Come on, Pels. All right, guys. Uh, we should have a video that drops tomorrow. Uh, wait. I got to do radio in South Carolina. So I don't know what I'm going to do this video. I'll figure out a way. It is. Pow. Our. L-S-U. Boom. Boom. 
and tonight oh we're doing we're doing detroit style pizza tonight let's go go bro seven thank you so much i really appreciate it thank you for being new um come to the next live stream i'll introduce it to everybody and once again tonight we're doing pizza let's go let's go